Canada or Australia? Which one should I choose to immigrate? This is probably the first question that comes to our mind when we think of permanent residency and we think of immigration from our home countries. So in this video, I'll tell you all the factors that you should consider before taking the most important decision of your lifetime. But before I do that, let me quickly introduce myself. I am Shitanshu from Dream Abroad. If you want to immigrate to Canada or Australia without paying hefty fee to the consultants, please visit my channel. I've got tons of videos on the immigration process of both of these countries. I do upload videos almost every day now. So if you haven't subscribed my channel yet, please subscribe it. Okay, I'm a permanent resident of Canada, but I'll try to be as neutral as I can. Both the countries are great. Both the countries are great options to immigrate. Both the countries are very similar in terms of the facilities that they have to offer to the immigrants. Quality of life, employment opportunities, organized immigration system, infrastructure, education and medical facilities, world-class cities, everything is very similar in both of these countries. But obviously there are some factors based on which you should decide whether you should immigrate to Australia or you should choose Canada. So the factors which we are going to discuss in this video would be cost of living, average salary, weather conditions, geographical advantages, rights and privileges, employment opportunities, and few other factors as well. Now, these factors would be important for you only if you are eligible to apply in both of these countries. What if you are not eligible to apply in Australia? then this comparison would not be even valid for you. Similarly, what if you are ineligible to apply for Canada? This discussion would not be important for you at all. So the first point is the immigration process and it is eligibility. So the very first point that you should consider is your eligibility to apply the permanent residency for Australia or Canada. Both of these countries have very similar criteria based on the factors like age, your skilled employment, your work experience and your educational qualifications etc. Now if you look over here, somebody who has got 8-10 to 10 years of experience or more will get 15 points in Australia. However, anybody who has got you know, more than 3 years of experience will get the same amount of points in Canada. So it's very important to notice here that let's say somebody who is 35 years of age Obviously, you have some points reduced because of uh, your age, both in the case of Canada and Australia, but you'll get more points in Australia, which will increase your chances of eligibility. While in the case of Canada, you won't get any special point for your work experience. Anybody who has got three years or more will get the same amount of points. So your eligibility should be the first point. The other point to be noted over in this eligibility phase only is that, let's say, uh, you've studied in uh, electronics, mechanical, biotechnical or you know any other stream and you're working in IT. In that case, your points will get deducted if you talk of Australia. But it does not matter in the case of Canada. So Canada has an upper hand over here. So, you know, it, this is a application specific things, you know, it uh, would differ from one person to the other. In that case, you should actually, you know, first decide if you're actually eligible for Canada or Australia. Now, if you're eligible for both of them, then in that case, you should decide further. Okay, the second point is probability of getting the invitation. Now, let's say that, you know, you are eligible, but you have to consider the probability, right? You have to consider how much time it will take for you to get the PR. Let's say you're ready to wait and you wait for a couple of years to get the invitation and all and then after that you submit your application then you spend around two years to settle over there so it will be like a five-year term program nobody wants that right so let's discuss the probability so let's say that you have around 65 points which is the minimum eligibility criteria for australia and you have around 460 points in the canadian point system so in that case you're eligible for both of them but in the case of Australia, you'll have to wait for maybe an year to get the invitation. You never know. It might take even one, in, one and a half year. Uh, but in the case of Aust Canada here, you'll get the invitation immediately in the next draw within the next 15 days because uh, you'd have a great CRS score. Now, let's say the other case. You have 75 points. While in the case of Canada, you have uh, 410 points. 
In that case, the probability of getting the invitation from Australia is more. You'll get the invitation from Australia in a couple of months, if not less. In the case of Canada, you'll need to wait or maybe apply for any PNP program. So in this case, you should apply for Australia. Let's say that uh, you have, you're eligible for both of these countries and either you have very good score and when you apply for both of them, you would immediately get invitation from both of these countries or let's say that you have, you're eligible but you don't have good score for either of them. In that case, which should you choose? Now let's discuss the points for those people who should actually, who actually lie in this hemisphere over here. Okay, now let's compare different deciding factors based on which you can take your decision. So the first factor would be cost of living, which is actually higher in uh, the case of Australia, while in the case of uh, Canada, it is a bit lower side. Okay, before we compare the cost of living, it's very important to realize that both these currencies are more or less equal. So you know, it doesn't differ much in terms of uh, foreign exchange. Okay, cost of living. So this is a very useful website that I found over the internet. Uh, they've given a description over here uh, across many things over here. So if in uh, the case of Australia it is, you can see that, you know, average monthly disposable salary after tax is 36% uh, more. And similarly, the basic utilities are also 35% more cinema price tickets are like 40% more uh, the clothing and shoe prices are 43% more internet is 34% more so on a holistic view if you try to check uh, you'll obviously find that everything is around 30 to 40% more expensive in Australia in comparison to that of uh, Canada uh, rents per month which is obviously the you know biggest uh, difference that you would feel is actually you know 74 percent more expensive so so if you earn more in australia you would actually end up spending more as well okay now the difference between uh, average salaries as well so in australia it is higher and in the case of canada it is a bit lower so there's an equilibrium in between the cost of living and the average salary if you earn more you end up spending more as well in Australia. Okay, so this, uh, this is the official website of uh, Government of Australia and you can find uh, that the average salary per week is around 1600 uh, in the case of Australia. While in the case of uh, Canada, it's around $1000 only. Big difference actually, you know, in the case of average weekly earnings in Canada in comparison to that of Australia. So the weather conditions. Weather conditions are much better in Australia. It is much warmer if you live in, uh, you know, if you belong to countries like India, Pakistan, you'll find much you know, more of a similar weather in Australia, while in Canada it is much, much colder. Obviously it is famous for its cold weather. For three, four months you would, you know, the temperature would even go down to around minus 25, 35 degrees Celsius in some places of Canada. Geographical advantages. Okay, so Australia enjoys its proximity with New Zealand, while Canada enjoys its uh, proximity with USA, which offers a uh, you know, great advantage for uh, people working in IT and different sectors as well. Now, if you're a permanent resident of Australia, in that case, you know, migrating to uh, New Zealand, living or working in New Zealand would be much easier. But in the case of Canada, as a permanent resident, it's very difficult because you have to get that H-1B visa. However, you know, when you become the citizen of Canada, it becomes much easier. Social security benefits. Social security benefits like sickness and unemployment, uh, you know, wages. In Australia, you would get them only after two years of being and living as permanent resident. While in Canada, you would enjoy it immediately. So th this al also differs, you know, it might be a de deciding factor for some people. Unemployment rate. Okay. Unemployment rate in Australia is a bit on the lower side. However, in Canada, it is slightly on the higher side. Let's, so let's see what the statistics have to say about it. 
Okay, so again, this is the official website of Government of Canada, and you can find that in October 2018, the uh, unemployment rate was around 5.8%, while in the official website of uh, Government of Australia, you can find the official unemployment rate was exactly 5.2%. So this is a difference of 0.6% uh, in Australia to Canada. But obviously this is just a statistics and it does differ from one person to the other and from one profile to the other. Okay, citizenship. Being in Australia as a permanent resident, you have to spend around four years to apply for the citizenship, while in the case of Canada, you have to stay there for three years and then you can apply straight away for the citizenship of Canada. And obviously I'm talking uh, staying there as a permanent resident, not as a, a temporary worker or uh, on a work permit or on a study visa. So guys, uh, these were the basic points through which you can actually decide, you know, if you want to immigrate to Canada or if you want to immigrate to Australia. But I would still insist, you know, uh, first of all, you should consider the immigration process and there are different you know benefits pros and cons of uh, each of these countries but they're more or less very similar they are both are great countries to immigrate and they offer you know huge benefits to people uh, who actually immigrate as permanent residents so thank you guys for watching this video if if you like the video please uh, click the like button and share it with your friends if you think it would be useful for them as well and also, please subscribe my channel if you haven't subscribed it yet.